Praise the Lord. This is the true worshiper of God. Hallelujah. Amen. It's good to be back. And hey, listen, I got a good message for you today. The title of this message is The Blessing is in the Get Up or Stand Up. The Blessing is in the Get Up. All right, all right. Hey, all of you who fellowship with me, thank you for the 669 that are subscribed. God bless you and welcome to the table of fellowship with the true worshiper of God. My brother out there, Joseph Brown. Amen. I'm sorry, guys, that I'm late bringing the message. I had to go get another laptop. Yes, yes, I had to go buy another laptop because the one I had was very old and it, it you know, it, it just wasn't any good anymore. It wasn't any good anymore, so I had to go buy a new one. God bless you. Thank you for your patience. Joseph Brown, um, he contacted me through the comments. And he put some fire under me and said, hey, true worshiper, what's going on? Are you all right? I haven't seen any messages. 213 messages. Amen. 213 videos, 213 messages. And Joseph Brown is on my case. He wants to see me, I guess, every week. I better bring the word. Amen. I thank you for the encouragement, brother. That's God's gentle giant right there. That's a big man. He's a humble soul. Humble soul. Humble. God bless him. God bless the women who come to this channel. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for supporting um, this channel. As you guys know, I'm going to say it again. I don't preach for money. I don't ask for money. So if you ever get some type of um, message from me or someone using my logo impersonating me, asking you for money, asking you for your emails, asking you for your phone numbers, that is not me. That is not the true worshiper of God. Do not reply. You understand? Do not ever reply to anything like that. Excuse me, that is not me. I don't ask for money. I don't ask for people's phone numbers. I don't ask for people's email addresses or anything. We're going to fellowship just like this. Just like the Apostle Paul did back in the day. He did all his ministry. Most of it was done through letters. That's right. Paul wrote a lot of letters. Preaching the word of God in writing. Yes, yes. And I'm doing it here on YouTube. God bless YouTube. Thank you, YouTube, for allowing me to use this platform. Amen. Thank God for YouTube. Okay, well, you guys know what the, mess, the title of the message is. Now, I came up with this. No, I didn't come up with it. The Holy Spirit let me know, hey, I need you to tell my people something. The Almighty God wants you to know this. A lot of us believers, a lot of Christians, a lot of folks who have given their lives to the Lord, they're finding it very hard to walk the straight and narrow road. You're finding it very hard to walk this straight and narrow road without falling. And when you fall, you feel real bad. And some people just say, you know what? I can't do it. They throw their hands up, turn the baseball cap to the back, go to, go to the store and get a 211, uh, or go get some Hennessy or some Amsterdam, some weed, some pills, whatever. This Christian life has stressed me out. I can't take it anymore. Well, I want to stop you from making that mistake. All right? I want to read something to you. And I want you to know that God says that you will fall. 
you will fall. Do you hear me? He already, it's not a matter of if you would fall, it's a matter when. And there is a blessing. You who are trying to do this thing so, you know, just, oh, I just got to, I got to do this right. And then when you fall, you got a child of the devil looking at you going, I knew you was a hypocrite. I knew you was fake. I knew you couldn't do it, right? Uh-uh, that's not how it works. Come with me to Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16. Let's get to it. As you guys know, I read from the New Living Translation. All right, here we go. Proverbs 24, verse 16 reads, The godly may trip seven times, but they will get up again. But one disaster is enough to overthrow the wicked. So in you who have these other Bibles besides the New Living Translation, like the King James, nothing wrong with it, NIV, Amplified, so forth and so on, your Bibles may read, a righteous man will fall seven times and get up. The title of this message is, The Blessing is in the Get Up. Now, not all failures is the end of the world for the child of God. Because God is telling us in this word. He's telling us in the word. He's saying that you will fall. If you are a child of God, if you are righteous, if you are committed to the Lord, God is saying you will fall and you're going to fall more than once. This should be helping somebody out there right now. You're going to fall more than once. And you're going to fall in front of those who have been waiting for you to fall. But they never thought you would get up. And even when you get up, they want to talk you back down. They want to talk you back down. But God says that the righteous, that the godly, may trip and fall seven times, but they will get up. I'm telling you, the blessing is in the get up, but those who are wicked, one problem, one breakup, one divorce, one being terminated and fired from his job, one disaster, and that's enough to overthrow the wicked, they'll never come back. Never. They'll stay down. They'll never come back. There are men and women who lose their job and go home and kill the entire family because they lost their job. There are men and women who get divorced and go somewhere and commit suicide. But the godly will fall seven times. I want you guys to know, when it says seven times, that does not mean one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That means maybe seven trillion times. That means seven billion times. That means seven million times. Okay? That means 700,000 times. Because I know I personally, in my lifetime, have fallen 89,754,000,000 times. 
And I say it like that because it took me a long time to walk upright. Took me a long time to walk upright. But the only way I got better is when I got up. I couldn't get up on my own. Every time I fell down, Jesus said, get up. I heard his voice. I heard his voice tell me to get up. And I had to get up. Because see, once you suffer that humiliation of falling on your face in front of your enemy, of falling on your face in, in front of all of those who always doubted you, when you get up and you try again, The blessing is in the get up. And every time I got up, I didn't fall down with the same trick that the devil tricked me with. Oh, he had a whole lot of tricks in his bag. I believe I ran through all of his tricks. He didn't have no more tricks for me. I kept getting up. The more I got up, the more Satan was running out of stuff to trick me with. I believe the devil just stood back and got the scratch in his head. Got to, man, this boy keep getting up. I got everybody in his family hating him. And he still get up. And he still got a reason to live. He's got a reason to smile. I done took him all the way down to homelessness. And this joker still gets up. How does he do it? Jesus kept telling me to get up. He kept telling me to get up. He says, my sheep know my voice. I heard his voice. I just got up. I got up. Every time I got up. When I got up, I didn't run back to my vomit. Oh, no. I over, every time I got up, every time he raised me up, I overcame. All of that is behind me. I once heard Jesus tell the devil, get behind me, Satan. Oh, yes. Are y'all with me? Come with me to Mark chapter 5. I, let's, let's get into it. Mark chapter 5. Look at um, verse 36. Mark chapter 5, look at verse 36. Oh, are y'all with me? Anybody out there that fell down? I'm going to tell you right now, get up. Get up right in front of your critics. Get up right in front of the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. Get up right in front of your enemy. You don't owe them no explanation. But you, who you owe is Jesus. You owe God that humiliation that you have suffered in getting up. Amen? He was humiliated for us, wasn't he? Made him carry a cross, a rugged cross. Stripped him naked and beat him and hung him on this tree for everybody to look at naked. Ain't put no cloth around him. Bloody and beaten. Suffered that humiliation for us. But God the Father said, get up. And on the third day he rose. Oh yes. And all power in heaven and earth was given unto him. I'm telling you something, brothers and sisters. Every time you fall, godly, you godly people out there, when you fall, when you get up, God gives you more power. He gives you more power, more knowledge, more understanding. Amen. Let's look at Mark chapter 5. Look at verse 36. But Jesus overheard them and said to Jairus, 
Don't be afraid. Just have faith. Then Jesus stopped the crowd and wouldn't let anyone go with him except Peter, James, and John. What's going on here? There's a little girl. She's 12 years old. She's 12 years old, and she is the daughter of Jairus. And Jairus wants to get to Jesus. And when he gets to him, he says, Can you help me, my daughter? Is very ill. And then while he's saying this to Jesus, somebody runs up behind him from his town and says, you can forget talking to Jesus. She's dead. You can, you, you can forget going to God. She's dead. Has anybody ever come up to you while you praying? And, and, and asking God for a miracle. And they're saying, you can just forget about that. It ain't going to happen. You can just, you might as well just cut your losses. It ain't going to happen. The title of this message is, The Blessing is in the Get Up. Verse 38, when they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw much commotion and weeping and wailing. A synagogue leader, a religious leader, is asking Jesus for help. Uh huh. Anybody that followed Jesus, sought Jesus for help, took a chance of being kicked out of the synagogue. It was very serious to be kicked out of the synagogue. That means that any benefits that a human being had coming to him were taken away. Make a long story short. If you was hungry, nobody would feed you. If you were sick, a doctor wouldn't come to you. If you needed money, if you needed a job, you wouldn't get hired. That's what it meant to be kicked out of the synagogue. That's just the short version. So everyone feared being kicked out of the synagogue. Anybody that followed Christ, anybody that believed in Jesus, took a chance on being kicked out of the synagogue. But here's a religious leader, a leader of the synagogue. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw much commotion and weeping and wailing. He went inside and asked, why all this commotion and weeping? The child isn't dead. She's only asleep. Everyone knows this child is dead. Every human being that's in the house knows she's dead. She's not breathing. She's been sick. And she's died. But Jesus says she's only sleeping. See, to God, we're asleep. To human beings, we're dead. The crowd laughed at the Savior. They laughed at the Messiah. They laughed at Yeshua. They laughed at at Jesus when he said, she's not dead, she's asleep. But he made them all leave. Everybody that was laughing, he said, get out. Get out. And he took the girl's father and mother and Peter, James, and John, and Peter, James, and John the three disciples into the room where the girl was lying. Holding her hand, he said to her, Talitha kum. Talitha kum. Which means, little girl, get up. Ooh. Little girl, get up. 
Talitha Kum. Little girl, get up. Joseph Brown, get up. Athena, get up. Matt Hall, get up. Sonia, get up. Daughter of I Am, get up. LG Payne, tell your whole household, get up. My own lane, get up. Beautiful Joy, get up. Mark the Messenger, I know you need this one, brother. Get up. Get up. Minister Beltran, get up. Andrew Gahadi, get up. Alex Eliandes, get up. Get up. Peace Treaty Petey, I know you need this, brother. Get up. Get up. Daughter of I Am, get up. Huh? Richard Luke, get up. Richard Luke Jr., get up. Michelle Jackson, get up. Are you listening? Talitha Coom. He said to this little girl, get up. And the girl who was 12 years old immediately stood up and walked around. They were overwhelmed and totally amazed. Jesus gave them strict orders not to tell anyone what had happened, and then he told them to give her something to eat. Barbara Jonelle Robinson, get up. Betty Robinson, get up. Maurice Robinson, get up. Diane Nicholson, get up. Get up. Get up. The Loud family, the McCullough family, get up. The Monroe family, get up. To the Lukes, get up. The Weeks family, get up. The Johnsons, the Jacksons, the Jeffersons, get up. Get up. The Bakers, get up. The Scots, get up, says the Lord. The godly will fall seven times. But get up. Amen. Woo. Come to me to Luke chapter 7. Let's look at verse 11. What does it say? Soon afterward, Jesus went with his disciples to the village of Nain. And a large crowd followed him. A funeral procession was coming. Out as he approached the village gate, the young man who had died was a widow's only son. And a large crowd from the village was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart overflowed with compassion. Don't cry, he said. Then he walked over to the coffin and touched it. And the bearers the pallbearers stopped. There are mothers who are losing their sons to violence from the police, to violence from other mother's sons, killing one another. And this woman right here just happened to be a widow. 
And the Bible says, when Jesus looked at her, his heart was overflowed with compassion. Don't cry. Don't cry. God is talking to somebody out there right now. Don't cry. Then he walked over to the coffin and touched it, and the pallbearer stopped. Young man, he said, I tell you, get up. Then the dead boy sat up and began to talk. And Jesus gave him back to his mother. The Bible says Jesus gave him back to his mother. Jesus has compassion on some parents out there today. Your children, your adult children. Or dead. They're dead in the prostitution. They're dead selling drugs. They're dead doing wrong. And you've been praying, Lord, please help my daughter. Please save my son. Today, Jesus is saying, he's, his heart is overflowed with compassion. Because even though your children are still alive, they're living a lifestyle that two things are going to happen. Death or prison. And mothers and fathers have been praying. And God's heart was overflowed with compassion for you. The Bible says that he gave this woman's son back to her. Jesus is able to give your sons and daughters back to you that have strayed off. Oh, yes, he is. And he's telling you to stop crying. I'm going to send her home. Stop crying. I'm going to send him home in his right mind. I'm going to send her home in her right mind. You can stop crying. And he said to the widow's dead son get up he said young man get up then the then the dead boy sat up and began to talk and Jesus gave him back to his mother verse 16 great fear swept the crowd and they praised God saying a mighty prophet has risen among us and God has visited his people today. I believe Jesus wants me to give this message because there is somebody out there that God needs to pay a visit to. God is paying a visit to, the, to your loved one that's in the hospital. They thought he wasn't going to make it. They thought she wasn't going to make it. But God is in the hospital right now telling that person, get up. Get up. The blessing is in the get up. Amen. Come with me to John chapter 5. Let's look at John chapter 5. Look at the fifth verse. I want to show you something. One of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. 
when Jesus saw him and knew he had been ill for a long time, he asked him, would you like to get well? I can't, sir, the sick man said, for I have no one to put me into the pool when the water bubbles up. In this particular chapter and verse, an angel will come down, they believe, would come down and stir the water. And when they seen the ripples in the water, everyone would run towards this body of water. And the first one in would be the one that would, that would get healed. First one that got in the water would get healed. Verse 7, I can't serve the sick man, say, for I have no one to put me into the pool when the water bubbles up. Someone else always gets there ahead of me. Jesus told him, get up. Pick up your mat and walk. Stand up. Get up. Pick up your mat and walk. Instantly the man was healed. He rolled up his sleeping mat and began walking. Amen. I told you brothers and sisters, the blessing is in the get up. A lot of you are down on yourself about a whole lot of things. And you shouldn't be. It's been depressing. You can't take it anymore. I hope I'm talking to somebody out there who just can't take it anymore. God is saying, get up. Get out of your, get up, stand up out of that depression. Stand up out of that woe is me. I have no one else. Stand up, get up says the Lord. And when you get up, God's going to give you something. A lot of you need to know what that is. Let's go to Acts. Come with me to Acts chapter 12. I'm about to wrap it up now. Look at verse 6. The night before Peter was to be placed on trial, he was asleep, fastened with two chains between two soldiers. Others stood guard at the prison gate. Suddenly there was a bright light in the cell. Peter is in prison. They got him chained and locked up with 16 guards surrounding him. Like he's some type of wild man. Strong man. They want to make sure he doesn't get out and mention this name Jesus. Because Peter got arrested for preaching in the name of Jesus. Yeshua, if you're Hebrew. You hear me? So he's arrested. He's locked up. Chained up. Verse 7. seven Suddenly there was a bright light in the cell. And an angel of the Lord stood before Peter. The angel struck him on the side to awake, awaken him and said, quick, get up. See, when you get up, don't you, you can't be, oh, man, shoot. No, when God tells you to get up, you need to jump up like you didn't got caught doing something. And you didn't want to be caught. Get up. Peter got up real quick. Told him to get up. And the chains fell off his wrists. Did you hear that? See, while you're down, soon as you fell, you got shackled. That devil put them chains around your feet. He put that duct tape around your mouth. 
chained up your wrist, wrap your arms, wrap that chain around your body while your arms are locked to your side, got you bound. But soon as God said, get up, the Bible said Peter stood up and the chains on his wrist fell off. This is what happens in the spirit. For you godly people, get up. The blessing is in the get up. Then the angel told him, get dressed and put on your sandals. Oh yeah, they had him stripped. They had him stripped, take off your shoes, take off your clothes and had him shackled. But God came in and woke him up and told him to get up and get dressed. So when you get up, brothers and sisters, put on your armor. Put the armor of God on. Put on Christ and get back to your father's business, preaching the gospel, walking by faith, believing in God. Loving one another as you love yourself and loving the Lord God with all your heart, mind, and soul. That's what you're supposed to do when you get up. You don't get up and run to the dope house. You don't get up and run to the dispensary. You don't get up and run back into whoredom. You don't get up and run back to the casino and scratch offs. You don't get up and run to that mess. You get up and run to God. Hallelujah. Worship and praise him. Thank him for his mercy, for saving you, for resurrecting you. The Bible says when you died with him, oh, you rose with him too. When God told Christ to get up, he told every last one of us to get up with him. Amen. Now stay up. And if you fall, you better get up. Mm, mm, mm. Angel told him, get dressed, put on your sandals. And he did. Now put on your coat and follow me. The angel ordered. So Peter left the cell following the angel. But all the time he thought he was in a vision. He didn't realize it was actually happening. You ain't going you don't believe that it's actually happening right now. It's actually happening for you. You are actually being blessed. All them troubles are finally gone. You can't believe it, huh? But it's actually happening. Because who are you following? You're following the angel of the Lord. Amen. He said, follow me. Watch this. They passed the first and second guard posts and came to the iron gate leading to the city, and this opened for them all by itself. Doors will open for you all by themselves. So they passed through and started walking down the street, and then the angel suddenly left him. See, God will take you out of whatever it is that got you bound. And then, poof, you don't see him. You don't even see him. He bought you out of sin. He bought you out of a failed marriage. He bought you out of sickness. He bought you out of cancer, extended your life. He bought you out of unemployment. Mm, mm, mm. Verse 11, Peter finally came to his senses. It's really true, he said. The Lord has sent his angel and saved me from Herod and from what the Jewish leaders had planned to do to me. Ain't that a blessing? Hey, listen. That's all I have for you. And when you get up, God will put these words in your mouth. Words of power. Words of faith. 
Brothers and sisters, this is the true worshiper of God. And you've just heard an anointed word. The blessing is in the get up. You hear me? Those of you who are down, get up. Don't worry about them jokers. Don't worry about those God haters. Naysayers. Get up in Jesus' name. This is the true worship of God. I love you and I'll see you soon.